Welcome to Caskets and Cocktails, Memoirs of a Cemetery Dude. Get ready for a hilarious dive into the world of death care where cemetery industry veteran Mr. Danny and his daughter Katie will answer all those crazy questions you've been dying to ask. Go ahead and pour yourself a drink, pull up a rocking chair and get ready for some laughs because we guarantee Caskets and Cocktails will be the last ones to let you down. Hi, I'm Danny Faulkner. I'm her daddy. And welcome to Caskets and Cocktails. And oh my goodness, guys, we have a crazy show today. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, some of the stuff. It is super weird. We've been getting a lot of questions about kind of what happens day to day in a funeral home. And um, one of the things that uh, our listener, Carrie, sent me an article on Instagram and Oh my gosh, this thing was crazy. It was yeah. like a legit ABC News um, video about extreme embalming. Mm -hmm. And so I I had never heard of it. Um, but this in this video, it is about posing people after their death in kind of ways that they would be seen. So the example they had was this lady who liked to drink bush beer or something yeah, like that menthol and, cigarettes. yeah and smoke menthol cigarettes and yeah. she was sitting up at the table in her saint's gear and she i mean it looked like she was just sitting at a table saints football saints football yeah. yes yes <laughs> yeah but um it looked crazy yeah. like i've never seen anything like that have you ever had any sort of experiences with extreme embalming i want to know carrie wants to know <laughs> the whole world the whole wants world to wants to know because this thing freaked me out well actually uh, there's a new wave going on in the funeral industry right now of uh, viewing uh the de decedents mm -hmm. and uh whereas around uh, the turn of the 20th century late 19th century mm -hmm. mama would die you'd take her to the funeral home get her all fixed up take her back home and put her in bed okay no thank you yeah <laughs> number one that's really creepy but number two we lived in a historic home for a period of time, and people would always randomly be like, oh, yeah, I went in your house. Like, old people would be like, oh, yeah, I remember going to funerals at your house. Yeah. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, carry on. So they put, they dress up, they get the dead person all gussied up. Right. And, and they... Would take them home. Like they just put them like in the front seat and buckle them in. No, no, and no, no, home no, or no, what? No, How does that work? Uh, there was they put them on a cart, you know, uh -huh. push them in the back of the hearse. Oh, okay. And then take them home in the hearse. <laughs> okay. Unload them, put her in the bed. Okay. And you know, have her all dressed up, put her in bed, and everybody'd come by and go into the bedroom. Yeah. You know, and uh, of course the dining room would be full of food and liquor and all that stuff. So. Anyway, they got away from that. Wait, I'm still confused by this. Mm -hmm. So let's say I, I, my husband passed away. Yeah. And I have him sent home, and they put him in the bed. Yeah. And then did they come back and pick him up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and they take yeah. him to bury him. And then I have to sleep in the bed that my dead husband was just being watched in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I am, that is, I'm glad that trend went away. <laughs> I am not missing that trend. <laughs> Well, they they over the years they kind of faded away from that and started viewing them in what they call parlors, which mm -hmm. is a definite nineteenth century word mm -hmm. for a large visiting room. Okay, yeah. in funeral homes built parlors or visitation rooms, uh -huh. and uh, that's where they would casket and then roll the decedent into the visiting okay. room. Yeah. Uh, I like it because I don't have to sleep there again. Yeah. <laughs> and what they're doing now uh -huh. is in, instead of casketing the body, they're putting the body in a bed. Okay. In the visitation room at the funeral home. Oh. Or laying them on a sofa. Uh-huh. 
and they're made up and all this sort of stuff. And they say that people like it more because it's a little bit more homey, yeah, more realistic. Okay. Uh, and uh, so that's been going on for a while. Okay. Uh, as far as strange embalming, uh, extreme embalming, uh-huh. the story... <laughs> When I started out, I started oh, out God. in Kentucky. Y'all, if you could see this man's face right now. <laughs> I started out in Kentucky. And uh, there was a little town uh, west of where we were mm-hmm. that had a real, real nice funeral home there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was quite large. Mm-hmm. It was a nice-sized town. It yeah. wasn't a city. It was a town. Okay. Well, around the... Um, Late 1800s, mm-hmm. there was this little black guy. He was an orphan. Uh-huh. And the owner of the funeral home kind of took him in. Okay. And um, raised him, took it, sent him to school and all this uh-huh. sort of stuff. And he worked at the funeral home. Okay. And he would go pick up dead bodies. He would go. They had was a, he a child? No, or not an as adult. he grew. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. As a child, he cleaned up and uh-huh. straight kept things straight. And, uh-huh. But as he grew, he ran the ambulance. They'd okay. pick up ambulance okay. and take him to the hospital. He would go pick up dead bodies okay. and bring them back to the funeral home. And he would always greet people, and evidently uh-huh. he was quite affable. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, so the owner dies. Mm-hmm. And his son takes over, mm-hmm. and this guy's growing, mm-hmm. getting older and older mm-hmm. and older. And the third generation, mm-hmm. the old man dies. Uh huh. So who had literally grown up in the funeral home his entire, entire literally, life? His entire life. Yeah. I mean, when the guy brought him in, he was maybe eight or nine years old. Wow. So he'd been there for. Pre, 75 years. Pre-child labor laws. Yeah, yes, pre-child labor laws. Uh, but anyway, so he had been there forever. Oh, so God. So what they decided to do was oh, no. they embalmed him, mm-hmm. and they kind of mummified him. What? Yeah, <laughs> and they dressed him in a suit, and they put him over in a corner. Shot. <laughs> yeah, they did. It gets better. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> dear God. That is so disturbing. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Oh, my God, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was a period of time in the, eight, in the <laughs> no. 1980s. Oh, God. When um, all of these big companies, big funeral home cemetery companies, yes. were going on a buying binge. Yes. And they were buying every funeral home that they could. <laughs> they so, were like, except this one, because this <laughs> these people are messed up over here. No, they uh they sold out to one of these oh, big okay. international okay. firms. They uh-huh. sold out, took the money and away they go. Yeah. Well funeral homes, especially in the South Yes. Are full of fabulous antiques, yes. antique clocks, and antique cities, antique chairs, and everything. And so, mummied funeral workers. Yeah. <laughs> well, they uh, uh, the funeral firm that bought this has got a museum uh-huh. in Houston, Texas, oh. and it's full of these fabulous antique uh-huh. uh, hearses and all sorts of. Uh, Funeral industry yeah. memorabilia. Yeah. Well, that so, sounds like right up your alley, huh? Well, they bought this particular firm. And uh, so they sent, after, it was about a year or something like that, they sent a guy in to do inventory uh-huh. of everything that they bought. Yeah. Because neat stuff they would send to the, to the yeah, to the museum. To the museum. Well, that, that makes my heart feel a little better. At least it's not going, like, being sold off yeah, or something like that. Yeah, they're not selling it at a junk That's store. That's cool. So, uh, and if you're ever around Houston, Texas, it's worth going to see this funeral uh, museum. Okay. So, the guy I'll is... i just shout them out on Instagram. He's going through all of these rooms and 
you know, jotting down yeah, yeah. this piece and that piece oh, and taking God. pictures. He gets up into the attic, and he's going through, you know, the big old camelback trunks. Yeah, how all cool. All this stuff. Ooh, that sounds like so much stuff. fun. And then he looked up. Oh, God. And there was a guy in the corner looking at him. Oh, my God. And he nearly wet his pants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he started screaming, and he took off running. Oh, my God. And what some of the... Some of the older employees that were there. They were like. Knew, it's like his name was George or something yeah. like that. And they said, oh, that's just George. Oh, Jesus. And he says, what do you mean that's just George? And they told him the whole story. And so what they did was uh-huh. they uh, put George in a casket. Okay. They had a very tasteful funeral. Uh-huh. Invited the entire town. Yes. Because everybody in town knew New him. George, yeah. And uh, then they bought up, brought in a mausoleum. Uh-huh. And they put him in this mausoleum. Uh-huh. A place of quite high honor. Yes. And, but for 50 years, George hung out at the funeral homes. Oh, my stuffed, God. Stuffed, essentially. That is so... Disturbing. Yeah. I was scared you were gonna say they took him and he's in the museum. Oh no! That's no, what no. I was. That's where I thought no. the story was going. No, no, no. I was gonna say, uh, oh my uh, god! They, they, uh, do you think George was happy about that, or did did you think? He, do you think he like enjoyed hanging out in the in the parlor? I think that uh, George had long since left the building. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter to yeah, George exactly. because George ain't around that's anymore. Right. That's right. <laughs> Oh so I just think, so it's been around for a long time. Daddy, that is the craziest story. Yeah, yeah, and just think, if if today somebody had done that. Oh. I mean, it would, first of all, then I'll go to jail. I was going to say. Secondly, they'd lose their business. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, that's just George. <laughs> yeah. No, that's just prison time. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they, uh. It was pretty strange. Pretty strange. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even really know what to say about that. Yeah. But, the, I mean, it's, you can't... People judge... People judge uh, people of the 19th century by 21st century... That's true. ...standards. That's and true. And you just can't do that. Yeah, you that's know? true. The times were different. Yeah, times were different. But George was quite loved. Yes. And uh, uh, it was just, it, it was very fortunate that that company bought yes. the firm and that they honored George the way they did. Yes. And that is sending him off. That is very respectable. It was very respectable. Yeah. High five to corporate America. We don't yeah. normally do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so in regards to extreme embalming, that's probably about. As extreme as I've ever heard. Yeah, you, that's a, almost as extreme as it gets. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But you know, more and more times, funerals are doing more personalized stuff. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know if you remember the story about the kid that died, and they were the posse or something, and they oh, yeah. painted him up in a yeah. clown face. Uh-huh. It's, it's really, uh, it's really um, personalized. Uh-huh. uh-huh. More and more personalized stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, we had at funeral home where I am, uh, we had a Harley rider, uh-huh. and he had two Harleys. Ooh! And they parked the Harleys in the viewing room. Oh, and it was that's neat cool! When we opened the door, and the guys were blah 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 blah. Oh, blah, they blah, turned blah. them on. Oh yeah! Inside Those the funeral things home. Those are huge. They're oh, huge. Oh, oh, to get them in there. Yeah. And oh. I mean, I don't know that you can push them. You don't just put it in neutral and push it across. Yeah. <laughs> so they fired it up and drove it down. What'd your there. boss say about that? <laughs> he he, he wasn't in. there that day. <laughs> <laughs> no. He said, put fans and get all the smoke out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was, that was an interesting thing. Yeah. You know? And then we had a one guy that was a, and it's more personalized. Yes, yes. You know, we had a guy that, uh, it was a young man, he fell off a mountain. Oh, Jesus. And killed him. Oh, yeah, and, as it happens. Yes, yeah, it know, happens, yeah. you know. It didn't, the fall did not kill him. It, the landing killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joke. I know, I joke. know, it's a yeah. joke. <laughs> but uh, anyway, 
they had him laid out, and he had his his hiking boots beside the casket, uh-huh. his walking stick beside the casket, had a 12-pack of beer. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it had, I had a tent set up uh-huh. uh, to where when you walked in the door, you know, you knew that was whoever he was, Charlie, yeah. you know. Yeah. That was Charlie's life. He loved That's the That's really cool. That is. That's really special to kind of yeah. bring that in. And there's a company, I think, that's really neat. It's out of North Carolina. And uh, everybody loves it. Mm -hmm. You give me a picture of mama Mm -hmm. or mom and daddy or whatever Mm -hmm. uh, on Monday. Mm -hmm. We scan it. We email it to them Mm -hmm. or whatever. So you know what a technocrat I am. (laughs) And uh, they weave a blanket. Overnight, oh. that is the exact copy of that picture. Wow. We receive it the next day uh-huh. in the morning by UPS or FedEx or mm-hmm. whoever. And uh, we hang it up in the room, and there's this oh, great that's big really blanket. Beautiful. So when the funeral is over, you know how veterans, yeah. they'll hand the widow the flag, uh-huh. we'll hand the survivor the blanket. That's really special. Yeah. Yeah. And and people love it. So it's more and more personalized. Yeah. And whether it's... Extreme embalming. Extreme embalming or extreme display or or whatever, it's more and more uh, personalized. Uh It's meaningful. I love it. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, guys, hang on with us real quick while you hear a word from our sponsor, and we will be right back for yet another crazy story. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet is a comedy podcast featuring brother and sister duo Alex and Christina as they recap dramatic readings of... One star reviews written by real people with not so real problems. Whether it's a bar's no throw up policy, a barista who's just too friendly, or a school psychologist's fashion sense, prepare for equal amounts of laughter and eye rolling. Listen to Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, or any of your favorite podcast apps. You can also find them on all so- social media platforms at Beach Too Sandy. Well, welcome back, everybody. So, we have another question. It's a great question. It's from Candace in Sioux City, Iowa. We've Uh. had to do that take a couple of times. I keep (laughs) saying Kansas, apparently. So, Candace, I'm sorry. But Candace wants to know if anything has walked away at the funeral home, as in stolen. Uh. Who, Who would steal at a funeral? That's... Not nice. I feel like Jesus would be watching. <laughs> you know? There's a lot of people that steal at funerals. You are kidding. No, uh-uh. Like, what do you steal? Oh, What's st- a good thing to take? Stupid stuff. I mean, they'll take Kleenex boxes. They'll take, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, around Christmas, they'll take Christmas decorations. They take Christmas yeah, decorations? Yeah, Dear Lord. Yeah. You're but, hard up if you're stealing Christmas decorations from the funeral yeah, home. <laughs> you know, I think it's just... Isn't that pretty? And so they next thing you know, it's in Grandma's pocketbook, and out the door they go. That's true. It is a lot of old people there. Oh, maybe yeah. they have. Maybe oh, yeah. they're like, it's the end. Oh, Nobody yeah. will care. I'll just blame it on my they'll, memory. They'll steal Bibles. Stop it. They will. They will. They'll steal Bibles. Oh, that is they, real frowned we buy, upon. We buy real nice umbrellas. Uh huh. Gone. You're kidding. No, they're gone. And they got our name on them. Wait, can I get one of those? (laughs) When you open it up, there's the name. Uh, Do they think it's free? Like, Uh, no. No. No, (laughs) They just take an umbrella. (laughs) You know, it's like, uh, there was a, we're a pretty big firm. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, One cemetery, we do 800 burials. The funeral, one funeral home does like a thousand. Wow. Uh, are all four combined to about 1,500, yeah, 1,600, that's a lot. something like that. It's mm-hmm. a lot, mm-hmm. a lot. And we're busy. Yes. Every day, every day, yeah. every day. And uh, 
what happens is we have guys that are working for us and they're moving vehicles around, getting hearses ready, getting uh, various pieces of equipment ready like uh, flower vans or things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, pickup vans, getting them all ready and keeping them up to uh-huh. snuff. And we have limousines. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one day uh, we were all at work and uh, the managing funeral director came back and he said, uh, have you loaned that number one limousine to anybody? I said, no. What do you mean? Like, loan it to who? I said, who would I loan (laughs) it to? Like, me? I would love to borrow it. (laughs) But uh, he said, uh, said, well, it's gone. I said, what do you you mean gone? He said, somebody left the key in it, and somebody came by and took it. Oh, God. A limousine. Now, you're talking about a $100,000 piece of equipment. Oh, my gosh. That so, is a bad whoops. Oh, yeah. Big bad whoops. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. Uh, they find this limousine uh-huh. in the middle of a liquor store in downtown Atlanta, like, which is about 45 miles away. Like. Parked at the liquor store? Well, like, it's in the middle of it. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> like drove into the liquor store? Yeah. Like through the wall? Yeah, through the glass. <gasps> through the glass door. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so it, it knocked the guy out. And so the police, you know, the alarms and all this stuff, the police come, and they drag this guy out of the limousine. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> bless his heart. He was mentally challenged, uh-huh. but he didn't know how to drive a vehicle. He drove it, he drove it for 45 miles. I was going to say, and, he, uh, he made it pretty far. And I guess he got thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can only assume. So his parents are good people. And uh, oh, so bless his heart. they get him, the cops get him, and uh, call us. And uh-huh. they call the family, of course. Yeah. And the family go down, and they're trying to get their little boy. I say little boy is like in his 20s. Yeah. Get him out of, of uh, jail. Ugh, nobody wants to go to Atlanta jail. Oh, no. Ugh. Uh-uh. And so uh, they called the owner of our operation mm-hmm. and said, listen, our son's handicapped. He's mentally handicapped. I don't know that he, he was aware of what he was doing. Yeah. I don't know if he thought it was right or wrong, but please show mercy. Yeah. So our owner said, look, pay for fixing it, and we'll just call bygones bygones. Yeah. And so they got the hearse, I mean the uh, uh, limo, mm-hmm. took it to the repair shop. The repair shop fixed it all up, and it was like, I don't know, $20,000. Oh, Jesus. Well, these people didn't have $20,000. Yeah, no, they didn't have any money. Nobody has $20,000. No. <laughs> oh, I got $20,000 just laying around. So so got- they forgave him. Yeah. You know, and they said, okay, look, we'll pay for the $20,000. <laughs> well, you know, they really got the good end of this deal, I'm huh? You, I'm telling you. So it was about... Six months later, I guess it was six or seven months later, I'm uh, in my office, and the managing funeral director comes back to me. Uh-huh. And he goes, hey, he said, uh, who'd you loan that number two limo to? Oh, Jesus, not and again. I said, uh, I said, I didn't loan it to anybody. Did, said, are you in the habit of loaning out the limo? <laughs> no, why? I, why did they always think that you're the I one that know. did it? I don't even know I've ever driven one. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, uh, anyway... Uh, same guy. No. Yes. No. Same guy. He he got loose. Oh my god! <laughs> went straight to the funeral home and checked the cars, and somebody left the keys in the new one. Oh in the new no! No. And he takes the the limousine off, and this time he didn't wreck it. Uh huh. He left it parked in front of the airport. In Atlanta? Yeah, in the Atlanta airport. Jeez, he for somebody it. who can't drive, he sure does make it a hell of a way. He didn't He didn't even uh, uh, go out in a plane. He just parked it there and got out and walked. Where? 
Back to Gainesville? He was headed that way. Dear Lord. <laughs> and, uh, that is some determination right oh, there. That's well, a man who does not give up. <laughs> the cops come, of course. They run a make on the, on the car, found out it was ours, and it was still running. Oh, still God. running. At least and it wasn't so all beat, to, they beat took, up. They took uh, fingerprints, uh -huh. matched it, oh. faxed the picture <laughs> of the guy to all the cops, and they're riding around, and here's this goofy bastard walking down the street. Oh, dum -dum 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 -dum. Oh. And so they pulled over and called him. I don't know what his name was, oh, Roy my. or something, and said, Hey, Roy, get in the back of the car. <laughs> okay. He got in the back oh, of the God. car. Back to Gainesville he comes. God bless him. Oh, my yeah, Lord. So, I mean, he, like, he's, he, he can drive a limo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe he's, he's looking a for some part-time yeah. work. <laughs> well, he, uh, he hadn't. Struck again, <laughs> yet since, since then. Dun, dun, dun. But he could, and I think that the funeral guys are being a little bit more vigilant on keeping up with the car keys. Yeah, or at least recognizing this guy's face. Yeah, y'all yeah. need to have oh, like a poster. Yeah, lock it quick, up. Quick. Rory's on his way. Quick, go get the keys. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I hope that you guys liked today's episode about what happens in the funeral home. I know I did. I mean, this was crazy. Yeah. I cannot, I, I, both of those stories just like blow my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's there, are, There's a lot of weird things going on funeral home. Not about dead people necessarily. Yeah. That's true. Not, it's what the living do, huh? Yeah. Whew. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're a always, lot trickier than the dead folks, yeah. huh? <laughs> I say there's nobody in the funeral home that can hurt you except the living people there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely yeah. true. <laughs> well, guys, be sure to follow Caskets and Cocktails on social media. Um, go out there, like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and be sure to check out um, our website, too, at casketsandcocktails.com. We have a ton of new cool stuff going on, and um, be sure to listen in, keep listening, and if you like us, be sure to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. That really makes a difference for us. It helps us move up in the charts. The other day we were like top 10 in some in like Guatemala or somewhere in oh, South wow. America. I have no idea why or how, but we were there for a well, little bit. I think it's our accent. They think I we're think, Spanish. Yeah, maybe. They maybe. Saying, what language are those people yeah, speaking? Yeah, we've really thrown folks <laughs> off. <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> if you are a listener in Guatemala, thank you. Hey, listen, and, tell yeah. your friends. Yes. Tell all your friends. I was talking to somebody the other day. And I said, well, are you liking the podcast? And they said, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about it. And the person next to him said, what podcast are you talking about? I said, I am so sorry I haven't given you a card. Here's my card. Okay. And so they were going to tune in. And you know, that's so awesome. It's, it's funny how people you think know about it, but... But don't. They, they don't. Yeah. You know, help them out. Well, uh, you know, I was... Uh, Put a little south in their mouth. That little south in their mouth. Well, my um, bestie uh, lives up in um, Nashville mm -hmm. and we went to go visit her this weekend and uh, we posted a picture on our, our personal social social media of her and I together and one of her friends was like oh my gosh is that Katie from Caskets and Cocktails? Oh wow! I, it made me feel like a celebrity for yeah. like a second and then yeah. she asked about you oh, she <laughs> so <laughs> that went downhill no, but, um, for just a second but yeah. well guys that's when you say you know he does a podcast in his underwear Ooh, <laughs> no he does not <laughs> that's weird yeah. well guys um, thank you so much and remember we'll, we'll be, be the, the last ones, ones to let, let you down, down. You can do it yourself. Go to anchor.com. It's free. It's easy. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. You can record and edit. They'll distribute your, your podcast everywhere. You can make money from your podcast. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today.